What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to the Waking Chaos Era video. Alright everyone, today we're going to talk about is it worth farming stage 11 gear dungeons. We did a video in the past, is it worth farming stage 9? And we came to the conclusion that it's not worth farming stage 9 gear dungeons because the drops just aren't good enough. So for the past couple of weeks I've been doing a ton of runs on the Queen gear dungeon. And I had our Discord community do a bunch of runs on stage 12. I'm going to put screenshots during this video for you guys so you guys can see the drops that we got. And if I didn't label them, I don't think you guys would even be able to tell the difference. Stage 11 and stage 12 are almost the exact same. Granted, from stage 12, you do get a little bit better drops, but it's honestly unnoticeable. Overall, obviously, it's better farming stage 12. But if you're coming into the gear dungeons from farming adventures and you've got all your party of three gear, you're probably not going to have the gear you need to go straight into stage 12. So farming stage 11 first is much easier and the runs will be much faster. Even now that I see the drops, I honestly have been farming stage 11 on most of the gear dungeons because I realized that the drops are almost the same and my runs are probably about two minutes faster in stage 11 than they are in stage 12. Not all of them, but on queen because I don't have Gangalo, I have to use a different team and it's just not fast enough. You don't need Gangalo, but he just makes the run so much faster. We'll also showcase the team that I'm using as well, just in case you don't have Gangalo like me. There's many other options out there, but I definitely came to the conclusion that it is 100% worth farming stage 11 gear dungeons. In some aspects, it might even be better, like if you're just coming into gear dungeons, like I said before. So if that is the case, I definitely feel like 11 is the place for you, especially if your team is not stable in 12. When you guys see all these drops, all these pictures, and what we got from stage 11 and 12, I feel like you will feel the same exact way. In a lot of cases, my time stand auto was better in 11 than it was in 12. And then there was other cases where I would get, you know, three or four pieces of legendary gear from 12 and only get two from 11. But that was very uncommon. For the most part, I would get at least one or two pieces of legendary gear from 11. And then I would also get the same from 12. So to answer the question, is it worth farming stage 11? Yes, absolutely. 100% it is. You most likely won't even notice the difference between 11 and 12. The thing with it is the bread is the exact same cost. So obviously, if you can farm 12 at almost the same speed that you could farm 11. Definitely farm 12 over 11. I don't want to confuse you guys in that aspect, but if you have inconsistent runs and you can't farm 12 in a reasonable time, there is nothing wrong with hopping into stage 11 and doing that so your gear gets better and then you can jump into 12 or if you don't have Gangalo and your runs are really, really slow, on 12 you could just do 11 in the meantime. You won't even notice the difference, I promise. So this is the team I've been using to farm stage 11 and 12 queen. It's almost the exact same team that everybody's using, except they're not using Valk. They're using Gangalo in replace of him, but I don't have him, so this is the team I have to use. And that's why it's slower than most teams, because we don't have that extra 100% damage on the poisons, which is fine. We don't need it. This will just show you guys that you can run it, no problem. I'll do a run for you guys at the end of the video in times 4 speed. This way you guys can see the team in action. But with that to the side, the spells you can really change depending on your gear and what your team looks like. You definitely don't need the shield spell. You could change this to defense break for Zatlocks. If that works better for you on the boss and it kills it faster, you could definitely change the Shield of Mercy to the defense break and it should work just as good. It really just depends on your gear. If your gear is lacking, then you want as much protection as possible. You might even want to take out Zatlocks and throw in something like a Black Horn or Mathesa, something like that, that will keep you healed and revived. Mathesa is actually really, really good for this team. When I first started doing stage 12, I was using this exact team right here without the defense break. And that was to run stage 12. It was a little bit long, but it did work fine. So if you're just breaking in and you picked Mathisa as your rookie pick, then you could run stage 12 with this exact same team. And this team is 100% free to play. Valk is very, very easy to get from summons. No matter if you do regular summons or advanced summons, he'll come on your account, no problem. Hackrid is a free fusion, same with Santis. So it's an achievable team for everybody. Now, again, if you don't have Mathisa, there is many, many replacements for her. You could use Desmond if he's sitting in your storage. You could use Black Horn, you could use any other healer or damage Zatlocks, depending, again, how good your gear is. You won't be able to run this team with Zatlocks unless your gear is up to standards, I would say. As your gear gets better, you'll be able to pull this team off with Zatlocks. He'll clear all the trash waves for you. You do want to try to get Zatlocks to move first. Mine doesn't, but in a perfect scenario, your Zatlocks will move first. This way, he will kill wave one and two, and then you'll go straight into the boss. It's not easy to achieve that because getting speed and then all those DPS stats that you need to actually kill the minions on wave 1 and 2 on stage 11 and 12 is not that easy to achieve. So I'm not there yet. I'm just saying in a perfect team, your Zatlocks would move first and then your other three units would go after that. If your Zatlocks gear isn't good enough and the team isn't working, you could also run William. I was just looking at him on the bottom and I was thinking to myself, wow, William would be really good in this team because he has the counterattack and then 
Santis on a curse set. And that's another thing I want to throw in there. If you can get your Valk and your Santis on a curse set would be great. That's the end game goal. I'll show you the gear in just a second. But having them on a curse set just gives them more chances to poison. And then having William on the team with the counterattack buff gives them another chance to poison. And then with his A1 doing the joint attack, just more poisons overall. So it's a really, really good team combination. I might even run this one at the end of the video and see how it runs. I think it would actually work really, really well. And then we'll change, obviously, the defense break for the Shield of Mercy. So this is the team we'll run at the end and see how it does. I never ran it with William, but I think it would work really well, especially mixed with the curse sets. I would say having 85% focus and the curse set is the most important thing. Then after that, just try to stack as much HP and defense as you possibly can. Because she is kind of squishy, and if your gear isn't good enough, she doesn't have enough hit points, HP. She will definitely get taken out really, really quick. So this is the setup that I have on her. I'll show you the overall stats. I'm still lacking a little bit of focus, but once I max out the necklace, we'll have the 95% focus. We don't even need 95%. 85% is fine. And I think we'll be right in that 85-95% area. She doesn't need to be this fast. If you're trying to get your Zatlocks to move first, you definitely don't want her this fast. Because you want to have your Zatlocks, I think, at 171. So you want to have everything else underneath that. This way he moves first. Kills the Trash Waves on 11 and 12. I think it's the same base speed that you need. And then your Santas can move after that. But if you're trying to get your Zatlocks to move first, you definitely don't want to have your other heroes a really, really high base speed. Because then it's just going to be harder for you to achieve that. And then when it comes to the Valk, you're going to run him the exact same way. Mine is not in a curse set right now. I have the gear to do it. I just don't have the resources to upgrade my current cursed gear. But once I'm able to, I'll switch him out to a curse set as well. For now, I just put him in speed. And I believe I put him in the takes less damage from critical hits. Because again, we just want our poisoners to stay alive. We want them to have the focus they need to put up the poisons. And then we want them to stay alive. Another important thing to keep in mind is turning off his ultimate during the auto runs. Which I'll show you guys a run, you'll see it in the run as well. But I do want to make it clear that you don't want to have his ultimate on. You want to turn this off. You just want him using his A1 so he puts up as many poisons as possible. That's all this man is there for, is to put up poison, 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 nothing else. So we don't want him using his ultimate. It doesn't really matter when he moves. Again, you just want to try to get that base speed higher than the enemy base speed. After that, it doesn't really matter what gear is on him. Same as Santhus, ton of HP, ton of defense, 85 to 95% focus, and a curse set if you can. Hackard's only here to boost our HP. Other than that, he's not really doing much on the team, but he does fit in the team perfectly, and I love having him on the team. I think as my gear gets better, I'll be able to take him out no problem for maybe another damage dealer or another poisoner or something like that. But not having Gangalo, you kind of have to work with what you got because, again, without that 100% extra damage, it just takes a lot longer, so it's good having him on the team for that support. He's mostly here for his ultimate, which is the plus 15% max health. That's really all we're looking for. The taunt is nice, too just in case you get caught up in the trash waves. But his main part of the team is his ultimate. And again, you just want a lot of HP, a lot of defense, and speed to him according to your team. That's going to be totally up to you. It doesn't really matter when he moves, because again, he's only there for his ultimates. And then, depending on what you use in the last slot, like I said, if it's Zatlocks, you want Zatlocks to move first if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just put your best DPS set on him. And then after that, it really just depends what you're going to put there. If you're going to use Mathisa, that's fine. Just stack her with HP and defense again. This team is all about tankiness. You don't really care about DPS unless you're using Zatlox or another DPS in his place. I would say these three are your main core. Then after that, really just what you have on your account and what's going to work for you, speed time, and all that great stuff. So I'm going to do a quick run with William and see how it goes. And then I'll see you guys at the end of it. Then we'll wrap this video up. So enjoy, and I'll be right back.
and poof, we're back. So it worked pretty well. It was a longer run, but it worked the way I thought it would. When I saw William on the bottom, I actually totally forgot about him. I never ran him in this team. I don't know if it's going to work for stage 12 or not, but for 11, it worked very, very well. So I'm guessing that it would work for stage 12. You're just going to need better gear, obviously. But overall, the team works great. I think the core, like I said, is the main part of the team. And as long as you have these three units, it doesn't really matter what you put in the last slot as long as it works at the end of the day, right? But I came to the conclusion that there is nothing wrong with farming stage 11. In some cases, it might even be better for most of you guys to be farming stage 11 gear dungeons as opposed to stage 12. So with that being said, I want to know what you guys think. What are you farming? Are you farming stage 11? Are you farming stage 12? What is your queen 11 and 12 team? Do you have Gangalo? Do you not have him? Are you using Valk? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say, so comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. Thank you guys so much for the support here on YouTube. We are so close to 5,000 subs. I think we're like 10 or 20 away. Once we reach it, we'll start another sub celebration. If you guys want to follow me on Twitch and Discord, those are always linked down below. We do two monthly giveaways on Discord, random giveaways on Twitch. If you want to be a part of the random giveaway that we do here on YouTube, all you have to do is sub to the channel, like and comment on my past 10 videos, and that will automatically enter into the random giveaway. I truly do love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.